I've been asking you guys which followers you'd like to see videos on, and the feedback has been really great so far. There's a decent list of followers you want covered, and I am working on all of them. The most common request so far has been the question, what is the best follower? Who's the best follower? Tell me what follower to use. So I've decided to go ahead and cover that one now. The answer is the Dark Brotherhood Initiate. I've said this is the best follower, but it is definitely not my favorite. I will go over the pros and cons, and you can make your own decision. You have to progress fairly far in the Dark Brotherhood quest line in order to have access to the Initiate. I've included a link in the description to my playlist, which includes guides for the entire quest line. The first major benefit to the Dark Brotherhood Initiate is that you're able to have it as a second follower. You can have it in addition to whatever follower that you like best. Now this could be considered a glitch, so those of you wanting to adhere to a legit playthrough, you can ignore this benefit. I'm still going to cover the follower as a standalone entity. The way you get two followers is not too difficult. Bring your current follower to the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary. Stand near the Dark Brotherhood Initiate. Dismiss your follower and wait for them to finish saying goodbye. Now re-enlist the original follower again. Immediately after speaking to them, asking them to join you, back out of the conversation and speak to the Initiate and select the Command Them to Accompany You option. You now have two independent followers. Both of them will respond to your commands. You can dismiss either one and rehire them at any time. If you tell your original follower to leave, you can rehire a different one. This will only work one time though, so in order to get the new follower to rejoin you a second time, you're going to have to repeat this process. But once this is done, you will have two followers at all times. Now I don't have a complete list of all the followers that this works with. I was not able to get this to work with Cicero. I still have to do more testing with him to fully understand why, but I was able to get the two follower glitch working with several other followers. So if by the end of this video you aren't sold on the Initiate, keep in mind you can still utilize all of the amazing benefits it has to offer as a second follower in addition to your mage or your house carl or whichever follower that you like best. Let's take a look at the Initiate. There are two Initiates, male and female. I'm bringing the female along for this video. First off, it is essential. This means you cannot wabajack it. I have heard reports that the Initiate is the only NPC that will correctly level with you, so you don't need to wabajack them. I was already 81 when I unlocked her, so I cannot confirm that, but you PC players can check if the stats increase every time the Initiate levels up. The wiki lists her as being able to level all the way to 81, but level 50 is the highest stat table I could find. If anyone on PC wants to take a look at her stats at 81 and post them to the comments, or confirm that the stats level up correctly, it would be appreciated. At level 50, she has 508 health, with 100 skill in light armor, one hand, and sneak. Her archery skill is also close to max at 98, so with all of these combined she makes a great stealth follower. However, she does have some archery problems, which I'll explain in a second. Her 100 sneak skill can be very useful for a stealth build. Here you can see Janasa gets detected well around the corner. The Initiate can get much closer, which will work to your advantage. You might also notice she tears these Alakar up with ease. Her stealth coding is great in some aspects. She has a very high sneak skill and keeps it very close to you instead of wandering off. This can also be very annoying, which is one of her few disadvantages. Assassin classes are designed for use with stealth builds, but they use the same coding as Barbus. When you're walking around, the Initiate gets right in your face. If you move a few steps away, she is right there with you. This becomes a constant problem. She can bump you off of ledges, bump you into objects, cause you to make noise. She will slide you across the screen when you're talking to someone. It gets very old very fast. However, her benefits do make this irritation worth the payoff if it doesn't make you crazy first. Another aspect of an NPC being essential means you cannot remove her default gear. Essential NPCs cannot have their clothing pickpocketed, so the perks will do nothing to help you in this case. It makes her a bit more difficult to equip. She wears typical Dark Brotherhood attire, so fur, hide, leather will not be an upgrade for her. She also has very low heavy armor skill, so you'll have to give her Daedric at the minimum or upgrade lesser quality pieces to around flawless level to get her to use them. With 100 skill and light armor, you're better off just using a set of light and ignoring heavy altogether. 
She will use a shield, but her block skill is low, and you should avoid giving her one. She has no default weapon of any kind, so she is one of the few followers that will gladly use unarmed skill. If you're okay with using the restoration glitch, adding a piece with a huge unarmed bonus can be pretty fun. Weapons are tricky. She selects her weapons based on quality, meaning Daedric first, then Ebony, then Glass, and so on. Uh, she ignores the damage value and ignores enchants, so she always picks quality first. Here you can see she picks low damage ebony and glass over a legendary quality steel sword. Upgrades are completely ignored. The tricky problem is that the assassin class has really crazy restrictions on what they're willing to dual wield. Most weapons will be ignored and the initiate will just use their offhand for blocking instead of utilizing a second weapon that you're to give them. I haven't tested everything but I went through an enormous selection of weapons and was only able to get the initiate to dual wield forsworn weapons and mage stabs. Staves have a decent range on them and can be fun at times, but on higher difficulties they barely make a dent in enemy health. Even if you swap them out at the correct times, adjusting to resist, adjusting to weaknesses, the damage you'll get out of these is not worth the effort. Forsworn is a great choice. The initiate utilizes swords or maces, it doesn't matter which. You can upgrade them, add enchantments, and rename them. She will still use both and they are very effective. While maces will do more damage, she attacks much faster with swords. Giving her two swords is the right choice as followers are prone to missing their swings and draining their stamina very carelessly. I'll show you how to utilize this to the max at the end of the video. The Initiate does not make much of an archer. She has no starting default bow and no invisible supply of arrows. You can give her a bow to use, but she must have arrows in her inventory in order to make use of it. I thought I could be smart and give her a permanent supply by getting her the Dwarven Arrow Artifact, as she is one of the followers that is willing to steal items. I had her steal the arrow, gave her a bow, and took her back to my usual spot up on Shearpoint. She swapped the arrow and I was feeling a bit cocky. She took her shot and then the fun was over. Even using the follower only artifact, she still only gets one arrow. Sad and funny at the same time. If you want her to be an archer, you have to keep her inventory stocked full of arrows. She is also willing to take the giant club. However, this is not in your best interest. You should avoid this weapon for her entirely. Once you get her the club, it is very difficult to get her to switch to another weapon without using restoration potions to glitch the damage up into the high hundreds. As you can see, her low two-hand skill prevents her from doing any meaningful damage, and the giant club turns an awesome follower into a pretty weak one. Compare that to her using two Forsworn weapons and you can see the difference is large. However, without resist and health, you'll notice she falls over because she is not at her full potential yet. When we upgrade her gear with the right enchantment, she turns into an unstoppable force. She will also utilize the summon staffs if you want to add an elemental pet to her arsenal. With her, another follower, two thralls, and a bunch of summon staffs, your party starts to feel like a little army. Ancient dragons become a joke, even if you're carrying dead weight. This Salakar did not make the final cut. Here's how to utilize the initiate to its full potential. First, stick with two Forsworn Swords. The faster swinging speed outweighs the minimal damage you'll gain by giving her maces. Forsworn is considered steel and uses steel materials to upgrade. No matter what your skill, be sure to wear enchanted smithing gear and drink smithing potions even if they're bought from vendors. If you have no idea how to get started with trade skills, see a link to my guides in the video description. For her armor, give her a set of light. Yes. I'm using Elven since it's the lightest set and requires the lowest initial perk investment, but you can use glass or dragon if that's what you prefer. Now let's go over the enchantments. Even though she's essential and has a decent amount of health, her health is lower than a house carl at level 50, and she's still pretty vulnerable to spell damage. I put Absorb Health on both of the swords to keep her from falling to her knees too often. 
I also put Paralyze on one and Frost Damage on the other. You can use anything you want for these two. Putting two Paralyze Enchants will keep her attacker from dishing out too much damage. Putting two Elemental Damage Enchants will help her kill the enemy faster. Either way is effective, it's up to you how you want to do it. On her Elven pieces, I'd advise putting Health and Resist everywhere that you can. On the chest, I used Health and Stamina. The helmet doesn't really matter. I started off trying a set of Fortify Destruction Enchants to see if she would not lose the charges on her weapons, like what happens with players. That does not seem to work with this follower. I also threw Water Breathing on there as it keeps them underwater. Even though they don't take any drowning damage, they will swim to the top anytime they run out of breath. You can skip enchanting the helmet altogether. The ring and the necklace are both health and resist magic. These two slots are the most important, and I wouldn't advise you put anything else but these two enchants. Health and magic resist are the most important upgrades you can give her in addition to giving her the right enchants on her weapons. Fortify light armor can go on the gloves. You need it somewhere, but other stats are more important for the other slots listed. Gloves do not have much to offer followers. I added carry weight as the second one, which can work if you want to use your follower as a pack mule. Some people choose to use the unlimited carry glitch, so it's up to you if you think that's worth it. For boots, you'll want muffle if you play a stealth build or sneak around in any way. If not, this is another great spot to put two resists. Either way, put at least one elemental resist here, two if you don't want muffle. Now take a look at the result. She completely destroys this ancient dragon on master difficulty in the matter of seconds. This is without my help and without taking much damage at all. Again, this is using a completely legit setup that you can do yourself. So in conclusion, while the initiate has her annoyances, which are primarily the lack of very many weapon choices and the refusal to get out of your face all the time, her benefits far outweigh her negatives. Her lack of a starting weapon allows you to customize her into any playstyle that you wish. You don't want her pulling out a bow? Don't give her one. You want her to dual wield? Give her two Forsworn weapons. Prefer the sword and the shield? Give her a shield and whatever weapon you'd like. The freedom you have with this follower is incredible. She has great stealth skills, she has decent stats, she doesn't have a low level cap. On top of her being the best choice for a standalone follower, you can just add her to your party as a second follower like I showed at the very beginning of this video. You don't have to sacrifice any follower that you love. I cannot think of a better option for a follower in this game than the Dark Brotherhood Initiate. Let me know what you think in the comments. More follower guides are coming soon.